I don't remember how I first got interested in aviation. No one in my family was a pilot when I was little, and I had never even been in a small airplane. But something about aerospace fascinated me. If there is one thing I learned when I was young, it was to never let an opportunity pass me by. I was given a chance to take flight lessons. I was nine. The next eight years of my life seemed to have evolved from that one decision. Flying was amazing. It gave me a different view of the world. It also exposed me to a new group of people. General aviation enthusiasts who had built airplanes, flown in air shows, a close-knit community that I had now become a part of. Why did I design my first airplane? It was at an air show in Oshkosh that I first got the idea of building an airplane. After winning an essay competition, I was given a chance to fly the FAA administrator. Shortly after the flight, mentors within the FAA recommended that I build an airplane and then attend MIT. I was 12. Still, it was kind of a joke at first. Visiting the Midget Mustang factory outside of Detroit, I soon learned that I didn't have the strength to buck rivet. But after a professor from the boarding school I hoped to attend, asked me what I had done lately. I decided to build an airplane. I was pointed towards a pulled rivet Zenith Zodiac 601XL kit, which would be easier for me to build and had a clean safety record at the time. I made a $4,000 down payment on the kit on Friday the 13th, January of 2006. $20 a week allowance saved up over the years. Within a month, the first crash of a 601XL in Oakdale, California. It wasn't really clear what had gone wrong. As rumors spread about what errors might have been made, I decided to go ahead with the build. I sought help from other builders online to design modifications that would make the airplane safe. No one could foresee eight more in-flight breakups, a total of 13 deaths that were to occur over the next four years. When these issues did come up, uh, again, I'm, I'm really thankful for, for Chris's ability and willingness to come out to, to resolve the problem so that, again, we could go back to enjoying our airplanes. And, uh, you know, and, and I know for a fact that if, if we had been any other company, we would have probably gone under because of that. And uh, so I, I'm very appreciative to Chris for doing that, but uh, equally well, I'm also appreciative to all the customers, all our 601 customers who are willing and able to do the extra work that it took to do the upgrade package, whether it was whether it was justified or not, that's, that's really beyond the, the, the scope of discussion at this point. As summer starts to wind down, most 14-year-olds are gearing up for their first day of high school. But one 14-year-old is spending the dog days in her garage on Chicago's northwest side. She is building a single-engine airplane. The FAA had me build the aircraft in reverse order. Fuselage first, then the wings the suspected components. I made over 300 modifications to the airframe, enough to become a light sport aircraft manufacturer as opposed to an amateur builder, if I met a January 31st, 2008 regulatory deadline. 2200 hours over 22 months. It was ready. I was 14. There would be right traffic at My dad was my test pilot. He first got his license two years after I started flying. It was scary to send him up in 86 Quebec, again and again, after someone had died the month or the week before. Still, I was confident in my modifications. By the summer of 2009, I was ready to fly it myself. I was 16. I was not scared to fly at Dix Quebec. It was something I had waited more than three years to do. I could not be afraid of my own creation. It is funny to think how I actually flew an airplane I built, the most deadly light sport aircraft ever designed, on my first year solo.
looking back at the past five years, I've learned how to build an airplane, but I find myself asking, what will I do next?